Hello guys. Today I will tell you about the movie The Last Emperor. Enjoy your viewing. In 1950, prisoners were brought to Manchuria by train. Among them is an intelligent man with glasses. When they are placed at the train station for subsequent transfer to prison, the man retires to the toilet and opens his veins. He is being rescued, because he still has to stand trial and answer for his crimes. This man is the last emperor of China PUI, but now he is an ordinary war criminal. After the death of the current emperor, baby PUI is called to the closed city by Empress Dowager 6C to make the next ruler of China. After after appointing him emperor, she dies. Together with PUI, his nurse Armo is sent, she should become a second mother for the future emperor. Besides her, the boy has no acquaintances. He is destined to stay in this city forever, to live surrounded by eunuchs and former wives of the emperor, who call themselves the mothers of PUI. After the death of the empress, PUI is crowned, but the baby cannot sit still, he is bored and wants to run. When he runs out into the yard, he hears the chirping of a cricket and finds the man who has this cricket. The man passes him an insect along with the jug where she lives. From this day on, the PUI is under the constant, vigilant control of the eunuchs. They make sure that he eats well and goes to the toilet, so that he washes during and indulge all his desires. An adult PUI, when he is transferred to prison, meets his brother Pudze here. He remembers the first time he saw him, and how this boy influenced his life. PUI had already grown up and got used to the idea that he was special and overbearing. Pudze was brought to him by his own mother, whom he had not seen for seven years. Up to this point, the PUI has not seen and not a single child. The boys quickly became friends. PUI told his brother about life in the palace, and Pudze opened the young emperor's eyes to his situation. Once, when Pudze put on gold-colored clothes, PUI was indignant, because no one except the emperor has the right to wear this color. Then Pudze told he is told that China has turned into a republic, and the country is ruled by the president. He even showed his, the emperor has no real power. PUI was upset, because he is the emperor only in the forbidden city, while he has no power over the rest of China. On the same day Armo was taken away, PUI he was left all alone, locked up among servants and officials. In a few years, when PUI is imprisoned, he, like the rest of the political prisoners, will be given notebooks in which to write a confession and explain why they were here. Meanwhile, the warden received a book by Reginald Johnston, who was once the tutor of the Chinese emperor. From it, he learns such details of the ruler's life, which he will keep silent in his confession. Johnston arrived in the country when PUI was still a teenager. He was interested in everything Western, he dreamed of modern trends and I hoped to get answers to my questions from the teacher. During one of the conversations, Johnston saw the emperor's pet, a small mouse, which was constantly sitting in the pocket of the PUI. During the meal ceremony, PUI made it clear that he was aware of the theatricality of this procedure, but he was used to it and took it for granted. Much of his life is just a performance in which there are no spectators, only actors. After a while, PUI finds out about the death of his mother. He behaves indifferently, but actually worries. He decides to visit her grave, but he is not allowed out of the forbidden cities. In desperation, PUI grabs his a mouse and throws it into a closed gate. After that, he climbs onto the roof, looking for a way out of these walls. He demands to be released from here, but no one agrees to fulfill the requirement. When Johnston arrives, PUI falls and almost rolls off the roof. He manages to be saved. At this moment, Johnston realizes that the emperor has poor eyesight. He calls a western doctor and he insists that PUI prescribe glasses. Otherwise, he will completely lose his sight. However, the emperor cannot wear glasses, it violates ancient traditions. In spite of it's Johnston who wants the boy to have them made. Especially since he doesn't mind. After that, it's time to choose a wife. ISPS presented candidates. And he chose the youngest because of her cheerful face. However, he was assigned a 17-year-old Wanjun. The emperor's second wife was Wensu. PUI is tired of having everything decided for him, so he asks Johnston to get him a ticket to England, he wants to go to university. When Wanjong was brought to meet the emperor, she asked to take her with him to England if PUI was going to go there. After this request, Wang Jun became it seems much more attractive to the emperor, because they are so similar. They decided to do the modern thing and postpone the wedding night for later. Their first meeting ended with mutual kisses. Having matured a little, PUI decided to carry out reforms. 
and he started with himself. He cut off his pigtail. He then appointed a new Grand Chamberlain and instructed him to inspect the Imperial warehouses. PUI wants to know how much they were looted by the people arriving at the palace. At night, when both his wives came to PUI, there was a fire. The eunuch set fire to the warehouses so that it would be impossible to determine the scale of the looting. For this, the emperor banished them from the Forbidden City. To do this, the PUI asked the head of the Republic for help. He was provided with troops to expel thousands of eunuchs. After the collapse of the Republican Parliament and the flight of the President, the PUI found itself in an unenviable position. The new government declared him a state criminal and ordered him to leave the palace. Johnston was ready to take the emperor and his family to the British embassy, but PUI went to the Japanese. The emperor became an outsider to many Chinese because he was from from Manchuria. But the Japanese took it well. They put him in an international colony, believing that he would be safe there. PUI was 21 years old at that time. He felt useless and dreamed of leaving for the West. Together with his wives, he led the life of a Westerner, but his younger wife was not satisfied with this. She was in the position of a mistress, because bigamy is not recognized in the West. She wanted to divorce the emperor, but PUI flatly refused her. Then Wensu just ran away from him. After that, a girl appears in the emperor's house the spy, whom everyone calls the Pearl of the East, or the Oriental Treasure. Wanjun confesses to her that the Japanese do not stop talking to PUI about Manchuria. When the emperor appears, the Pearl of the East tells him that the imperial tombs in Manchuria were looted by Chinese soldiers. This gives him an extra reason to turn away from the rest of China. Japan seized Manchuria, installing a puppet government there. Then they asked for cooperation on this issue from the PUI, but he allegedly refused. This was the official version. In fact, he agreed to the terms of the Japanese. His appointed emperor of Manchuria. His relatives dissuaded PUI, but he still decided to become the ruler of this part of China, which he considered his homeland. He was sure that the Chinese had abandoned Manchuria and he was the only one who could save it. Wanjun understood that the true rulers of Manchuria were the Japanese, but PUI did not see this, and she suffered. Her only friend was the Pearl of the East, although Wanjong hated her. She got her hooked on opium. PUI realized his real situation when all the weapons were taken away from his imperial guards. He tried to declare independence Manchuria, but all his entourage turned away from him. PUI simply couldn't do anything. The emperor was useless again. Then he said that he was waiting for an heir to whom he would transfer the throne of Manchuria. However, the Japanese opened his eyes, informing him that Wanjun became pregnant from the imperial driver. But no one wanted to disgrace the name of the sovereign, so they quickly got rid of the driver, and the child was allowed to be born. However, immediately after that, he was killed by the doctor who delivered him. The PUI also reported that the child was stillborn. All this time, the Japanese had leverage over the emperor, they, they gave him orders favorable to Japan for his signature, and he signed them. After giving birth, Wanjong left the emperor's palace. This was followed by the Second World War, in which Japan surrendered. Some Japanese PUI supporters committed suicide after this news. The emperor was urged to surrender to the Americans, because if he fell into the hands of the Russians, he would be killed. Before leaving, Wanjun came to PUI. After walking through the emperor's palace, she spat in the faces of the hated Japanese. Pu and did not have time to fly away. The Russians landed in Manchuria and captured it. After that, he went to prison. On during the interrogations, he told everything he knew about the past events. At some point, he began to sign all the confessions that were brought to him for signature. At first, the emperor continued to live in a cell with servants who were also prisoners. They helped him get dressed and wash. Noticing this, the warden transferred him to another cell, where no one was going to take care of PUI. He had to learn to live on his own. In prison, he mastered the profession of a gardener, and after a while he was released for good behavior and assistance in exposing war crimes. Once on however, PUI continued to work as a gardener. He led a modest life and lived until 1967. This year he witnessed a demonstration of communists. They led political prisoners and urged them to admit their guilt in the crimes attributed to them. PUI saw the warden among them. He tried to intercede for him, but the young soldiers drove him away. Soon after, PUI went on an excursion to the Forbidden City. Here he came to the palace where his old throne stood. 
Pui went behind the fence to sit on the throne once more. But a boy stopped him. The watchman's son. Pui told him that he was once the emperor of China, but the boy did not believe him. Then Pui took out of the hiding place a jug with an old cricket, which was given to him many years ago, and gave it to the boy. While he was looking at the insects, Pui disappeared. He died in 1967. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe and like if you want more similar videos.